What up, players? Warm up, stay up in this mode. Welcome to part four, subsection B how to paint the Rhinox for your iron blaster. <clears throat> so we let the washes dry now, and now we're going to get onto the highlighting. For this, I'm going to start with Codex Gray, and we're going to do a very, very light dry brush on the fur with this. So. gonna get as little paint on the brush as we can. Wipe off the majority of it. Make sure that we're we don't have too much on it and then we're just going to go start from the bottom and just work our way up. Try to stick to the fur. If you get any on the skin area, you can just go back over the skin with Kemri Brown. And there we go. So, as you can see, the, the paint immediately gets caught on the upper ridges of the fur, which is, which is what we want. When working like this, with a dry brush, you might need to constantly be dipping back into the pot and wiping off the excess just because there's so little bit of paint, so little paint on the brush when you're going in to attack it. Um, but that's fine. <laughs> do 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 do. Been off the majority. This is also doing this with the chaos grade. This is also good uh, practice because when we're going back over, we're going to go back with fortress gray in just a second an even, even lighter dry brush. You don't want to um, show too much of a stark transition. So this is good practice to get your technique down on this model for how you're going to do the, the dry brushing of the fur with the fortress gray. When you get to the head, that's the most important part because that's what the the viewer's eye is going to be naturally drawn to. It's got those giant tusks, it's at the front of the model. You just want to make sure that you, you are attacking it appropriately. Not too much on my brush. There we go. There. Very cool. So now we're going to continue and we're going to, like I said, continue with Fortress Grey. It's pretty much the same thing. If, if anything, you want to be even more careful when you're hitting the fur 
Uh, you want to look at it from all angles. Keep turning, keep turning your model while you're painting, so you can see how the how the paint has got gotten on to each of the angles. Because it might look good from one side, but when you are looking at the model from a different angle, it might look it might not look as good. So you want to keep touching up, keep dry brushing, and um, I am going to actually do that off camera. I'm going to continue with the fortress gray highlight off camera and then I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll move on to um, highlighting other other areas and picking out details in other areas okay see you in a little bit <coughs> okay so now that our rhinox is highlighted or his fur is highlighted we're going to paint in the eyeballs so we're gonna start off with a horizontal line of chaos black Chaos Black right across the front, or I mean the side. We're going to do a horizontal slash, so right, you're going to go right along with the eye. Instead of trying to attack it straight forward, just do little, little strokes from one side to the other. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our fortress gray, or if you have actually space wolves gray, would work really well for this. Take your space wolves gray and paint a horizontal slash right across. Again, this time trying to keep within the black. What is that? There's a weird something inside the eyeball of my. Deal with that is okay. So, paint a little horizontal slash, and be careful with the space was gray if you're going with the. Uh, I guess we'll call it the old range of paints. It's a very space was gray is a very tricky paint, much in the way of skull white. In that, if you leave it on your brush for any amount of time, it'll pretty much stick there. Get all clumpy, so. You want to um, keep it thinned down as much as possible. There you go. And we're going to just take a little bit of skull white and do a vertical slash down the middle of each eyeball. See that? Or... Or... What are you looking at? Or... Okay, next we are going to paint. Um... We're going to highlight up the bone, and we're going to do that with some bleached, ble bleached bone and then of stone. So there are those two colors. We're gonna start with the den of stone because that was the base color. <coughs> this is almost a dry brush, almost, because we're working back to what we had before.
I love how Denim Stone is almost like almost like an ivory bleach bone I feel has this yellow pigment to it which um, is you know can be kind of take it or leave it kind of thing but Denim Stone is very very much a very accurate um, bone color It's just my technique of painting on the uh, painting on these tusks, and if you don't like it, then you know you can do your own. You might have a technique for painting the bone that suits you more. So, by all means, this is just how I do mine. It's tough when you get to the tip and you've had a a wash done. I might go back again with a, another another wash of Devlin mud. Oh, I'm sorry, I might be painting totally out of frame for you to see. Igor, steady the camera. Stop texting your high elf girlfriend. But master, we're in love. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of bleached bone and I'm making my way in the world today up to the top of the t tusk. This time I'm trying to be more horizontal with it. I'm painting it um, kind of like straight up. So you want to watch out these. You'll notice that the wash has seeped into some horizontal cracks in the tusks, and you want to watch out for those. You don't want your bleach bone to get into those too much. Really like the the brown skin of the rhinox. I think it's great contrast from the from the gray fur. <laughs> okay, so the last thing we're gonna do to tie everything together is we're going to take some. Igor, Griffin Sepia Igor. Oh, sorry, Master. Um, sorry. Uh, here it is, Master Griffin Sepia. I am going to start instituting a no cell phones while recording rule, Igor, because you are not doing your job, sir. I'm sorry, Master. So I went kind of, th kind of thickly. You don't have to go that thick onto onto the tusks. This is gonna tie in the bleached bone color right into the denim stone and make it really uh, easier to to um, transition the two colors. You're also gonna be hitting with your griffin sepia the other little tusks and the teeth. Now these don't need as much work, so we're not doing the, that's why we didn't do the initial um, Deneb Stone and Bleach Bone Highlight. 
We are going to give them a final highlight of that those two colors though. We just didn't need them right at the very beginning. Which is why we left them alone. Yeah, that's really going to give your guys teeth a very moldy, decaying uh, look. Perfect for ogre kingdoms. Last thing you're going to do with that griffin sepia is paint in the toenails. Look at you, little Miss Rhinox. Beautiful toenails. Oh. There goes the doggy. See when that starts to dry how that really ties in the bleached bone color of the tusks and really gives it an old ivory bone kind of feel to it. I love it. I think it just it's it's so effective. It's so simple and it's so effective and it looks it looks real. It looks it looks like it's genuinely crafted out of like ivory or bone that's been <coughs> that's been aged suitably like an like an old rhinox's horns would be. So that is actually I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, I'm afraid to, to touch it again. So if you if you want if if you'd rather have starker highlights, which is what I was planning on doing before I decided I'm just gonna leave it, then you can just re touch up with then a stone or a bleached bone, the, the teeth, the tusks, any of the horns. Um, but like I said, I kind of like it. I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe I might change my mind when I glue it to the base. But this is going to be it for the how to paint a rhinox. A lot shorter than, um, than the other sections because this had a pretty monochrome, um, like one simple one or two kind, of, two kind of shades, colors to it. The gray and the silver and the, the brown the bone <coughs> they're all kind of like the same color you don't see any stark reds or blues or turquoise so we're gonna jump on next to the giant honking cannon which I'm sure uh, some of you are waiting for and uh, we'll see you then